Hey Achievers, happy Tuesday. Hope all is well with you guys. So by the title of this video, I'm about to be candid, as transparent as can be. And yeah, I'm relaxed, I'm comfortable in my comfy robe, got my coffee. And we're just gonna have an honest conversation or better yet, I'm going to have an honest conversation with you about me and choices that I've made in my past that may or may not affect my future. Not so much my present, but my future. And we're going to talk about it. I am 39 years old. I'm single. I have no children. I'm currently unemployed. I'm on unemployment. And I have no retirement none and <laughs> I'm terrified I am freaking out and don't get me wrong things will change in my future because I've learned the lessons already I'm not where I feel I should be and with that I understand that life happens we never know when things are going to change for us. Did I have a retirement account? I've had several. I mean, I'm 39. I've been working since I was 16 years old. <sighs> so I know you might be wondering, girl, what happened? Girl, how can you let it get to be that bad? And you are 39. Like, what's tea? Can't tell you what's tea, but I'll tell you what's coffee decaf that is <sighs> when I really started to get serious in a sense well let me take it way back when I thought I knew it all thought I had all the time in the world I was not taking advantage of what is called compound growth within my 401k right I was maybe 23, 24. Um, I was working in the school system at the time. So I think they had 403Bs. And, you know, it was like, <laughs> I was like J.G. Wentworth. It's my money and I want it now. Like, I don't, if taxes isn't taking it, I'm not worried about my future. Like, I have all the time in the world left. That was my mindset when I was like 23, 24. And don't get me wrong. I know they say in your 20s, you are still trying to figure out who you are, still trying to figure out life. But when I look back on it now, being 39, those 20s went like that. And it's like, of course, if I knew then what I know now. I would be in such a better place financially. Would I still be out of a job at 39? Maybe so. The world has changed. We all went through the massive situation that lasted about two or three years. And if I'm being honest, it's it's still going. Like, if we're really going to keep it a buck. But I wish I did not dispose of my retirement accounts. Like every job I had, maybe I, I would say I had around total from what I've taken out that drained me to zero. I would say maybe 15000 And I think I took it out in like $5,000 $5, increments at a time because, you know, as life happened or as loved ones passed away, me who used to be the people pleaser. Hi, my name's Crystal. I was a people pleaser and a avid enabler to grown adults, right? But that's not me anymore. That's my past. I'm no longer my past. But I just want to tell you how I got to where I am today. Making those choices, putting others before me, you know, paying bills that were mine and some were not mine making sure that everyone else around me is financially sound and okay and not realizing that you're taking money from yourself, right? If I have $25, 
and someone says, hey, Crystal, you got $10 until Friday? Sure. I no longer have 25. I have what? 15, right? Now, the odds of getting that $10 back is what? 50-50? I may get it back or I may not. And then, you know, once people owe you money and then they feel obligated to not pay you back or get an attitude as to why they want you to pay back your money that you lent to them, they think audacity is on sale and they choose to not pay you back or if they pay you back, they want to make you feel bad about paying you back your own money. And they may say like, oh girl, here go your little $10 that I let you borrow. And it's like, but where was that energy when you were down and out and were $10 short for something? And one of the things that I had to learn growing up, entering the 30s, almost 40s, was that I no longer supply money for people for for situations that they put themselves into to an extent. Let me just give an example. Um, someone asked to borrow money from me and they're married happily married and they asked me for money and my questioning was what about your husband like you guys are a two-income household versus single old me who's just a one-person household right and it's like oh well you know we had to do this for the kids and this for that da, 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 da. but you feel obligated to ask me because not only am I single, but I don't have children. And I hate that like misconception of people who think that those who don't have children still don't have some of the same responsibilities as they do. They just have extra mouths to feed and clothe. That's not the case. We have the same amount of bills as you do. If not, maybe even a little more because we don't have children, you know, but you know, I said no. And when I said no to that person, the phone call stopped, the relationship ended. And it's like, as long as I was saying, yes, here you go. I was a part of their life. I was a part of their circle. I was a part of their conversation. I was a part of their children's lives. I was a part of their, you know, like husband's lives I was a part of their friend circle I was invited to things I was invited on trips but as soon as the no started the relationships diminished right I was no longer into the children's lives I was no longer a part of their friend group I was no longer a part of what their lives were as friends, right? I was no longer a person of interest to them. I was no longer needed to them. And then I was just no longer a part of their life altogether. It happens, right? It's a thing. But you know what? It taught me so many lessons. When you don't have for someone, their true colors show whether they're going to continue to be in your life or not. A lot of them were gone once this was gone, right? Once this was no longer accessible to them, it was gone. Now it's like, okay, you're grieving a friendship because you're no longer friends and it's like now you have to come to the realization of okay you have to get real with your money right 
um, you can no longer afford to take chances with your money. So I started to boss up, level up. No started to be a thing. And the only time people would reach out and call was when they wanted something. This, something else, something that was taken from me that was uplifting them, right? And that was a part of my money mistakes. That was a part of where I got to where I am. And, you know, when you come from being taught how to be an enabler and a people pleaser, um, you learn so many different things. You know, it's like, I have to create a solution. You're learning new skills. You're learning leadership. You're learning to solve problems. You're learning to create solutions, right? <laughs> By doing these acts. But in the long run, solving other people's problems, creating solutions for them is just not filling your cup. It's draining you. It's diminishing you financially. So now that my answer is no for things, right? Um, it's quiet. And now I have no money for retirement. And I'm terrified, terrified of what my future will look like. I look at those who are around me, who are my elders, and I'm seeing them in their 60s, 65, 66 who's retired but still working just because they did not get it right because maybe they weren't taught how to get it right regarding a 401k maybe they weren't taught to what to invest in and you know I'm still very young being 39 still very young and I look at what I want to become or what I don't want to become when I become 65 70 and now they're raising their retirement age to 70. So I hear, who wants to do that? You know, so what, what do I do in my waiting season of my next amazing opportunity with my next position, right? I have some things that I definitely am going to do different that I wish I would have recognized and done in my 20s throughout my 30s. Study investing. There's tons of YouTube channels. There's tons of people that talk about investing. I know it may seem boring, but trust me. Um, I study Warren Buffett. I look at a lot of his interviews, talk about how he got started, what he invests in. I make a list of what he invests in. Um, another great channel is Mommy Trader. Um, you know, I love her channel. She looks like me. She is very well off in her investing journey. I think she has like a million dollar portfolio, if I'm not mistaken, but check out her videos too. And, you know, one of the things that uplifts me is to know that it's not too late to get it right. It's not too late to still be a millionaire if that's your decision and to do it through investing. It's not too late to have a retirement so you can live, your future self will thank you, so you can live peacefully and not still have to punch the clock and work. Um, so that's one of the things that, you know, I want to do. Like I've already mapped out what percentage I am going to put into my 401k um, or pension or for however it works out with the job, whatever they use. Um, I definitely want to max out my 401k. I think it's like 22,500. Definitely want to max out my Roth IRA, which is, I believe, 6,000 or 6,500. And, you know, I'm going to be like Buffett says, buy and hold and just kind of leave it. And I feel like one of the things that helps with that is to automate your funds. Automate and then do research and like a deep dive on what to invest in. What are some things that are not going to go away anytime soon? Like something that's always needed or that will always be around. Movie theaters is one I could think of. Coca-Cola, Clorox products, right? Um, 
Tesla, maybe certain banks, you know, um, whatever you choose to research and invest in, you know, is what you should do. But yeah, I'm, I'm terrified, but I'm excited at the same time. I'm excited to learn from the mistakes that I made in my past. But I'm terrified to see how things are going to go in the future. Like no one was expected for what happened, what, four years ago now to happen. And it's like, if it does, I want to be prepared. And I don't want fear to get in the way to where I then take that money out or use that money for unnecessary things. Because I'm going to be honest, you guys, it was unnecessary. Like... I mean, don't get me wrong. I used some of the money to like pay rent and stuff a couple times. But you guys, I, I, I could have gotten the money elsewhere or just could have been very strict on my budget to where I could have been able to afford everything and to not, um, you know, enrich other people's lives while making mine to my own detriment. <laughs> like, you know, um, if so, if I can give you any advice at all. If you don't have retirement or if you don't have enough retirement, definitely do your research, invest in what is necessary for you um, and don't take out your 401k for, for anything. I mean, if you have to, to like, I don't know, they say if you need to save a life or something like that, so that's something totally different. But if you don't have the funds, don't still don't. Get a try and get a loan or something. And I mean, I don't like to promote going further into debt. because I am like the debt queen that needs to be my YouTube channel. The debt queen because I have student loans out the wazoo. But that's OK. We're going to be debt free. We're claiming it. We're putting it. We're speaking it into existence. We're speaking life over ourselves. We are going to be successful. We are going to be a millionaire. We are going to be debt free. Those are the things that we are going to do. But do not take out your retirement money. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.